the FI23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sudhir Menon. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome to quarter three FI23 earnings call. Uh, quarter three registered uh, revenue growth of 18% uh, led by strong growth in the branded generic markets and steady performance of uh, the generic markets. Branded generic markets uh, constituted 70% uh, of the total revenue base. The growth in the branded generic markets were primarily driven by new launch momentum, performance of the top brands, and integration of uh, acquired portfolio. Uh, in terms of financial performance during the quarter, the revenues were 2491 crores, up by 18% on YOI basis. Operating EBITDA was 724 crores, with operating EBITDA margins at 29.1%. Uh, there is a one-off impact uh, on gross margins uh, by around 0.6% uh, for the quarter uh, due to underabsorption of uh, manufacturing cost, as there was a temporary stoppage of manufacturing in the month of October uh, for around uh, 15 to 20 days for carrying out uh, cleaning validation of certain equipments uh, as a follow-up to the uh, US FDA audit. Uh, today, the board of directors uh, have approved uh, an interim dividend of uh, rupees 14 per share. Uh, with this, uh, I would request Aman to uh, give his insights on India business. Thanks, Sudhir. Uh, India revenues at 1259 crores grew by 17% and included revenues from the integration of Curatio Healthcare. As per the AIFC data set, uh, Torrent's growth in Q3 was at 12% in line with the IPM growth of 12%. Uh, our growth was aided by new launch performance, particularly in the chronic segment, uh, performance of our top brands, and strong growth of the Curatio portfolio. Uh, at the end of the quarter, Torrent has 19 brands in the top 500 of the IPM, with 13 brands now more than 100 crore sales as of Matt, December 2022. Our field force has been further expanded, and MR strength now stands at 5,300. This is inclusive of the Curatio divisions. Our base business, MR strength stands at 4,700, uh, which has also been expanded in the current quarter. For YTD December FY23, revenues were 3,728 crores, up by 15%. We expect the India business to continue its growth momentum, backed by new launch performance, top brand performance, increase in field force productivity of the expanded field force, and continued performance of the acquired portfolio of Curatio Healthcare. I'll now hand over to Mr. Sanjay Gupta for the international business. Thanks, Aman. Let's start with uh, our uh, biggest branded generics business outside of India, which is Brazil. So Brazil revenue was at 248 crores, up by 36% on a Y on Y basis. Constant currency revenue was at Brazilian reais, 159 million, was up by 17%. As per secondary data set, Torrent's growth is 19% versus a branded generic market growth of 13% for the quarter ended November 22. On a MAT December 22 basis, Torrent's growth is at 15% versus a BGX market growth of 12%. Strong contribution to growth has come from our CNS franchise and the generic business, which now contributes about 14% to our Brazilian revenues. We have launched six products in the last 12 months. The two biggest markets are for Desvenla vaccine and Rivaroxaban, where our market share in prescriptions in the month of December is at 8% for Desenla vaccine and 9% for Rivaroxaban. Our plans to increase our coverage of CNS and cardio markets from the current 19% to 35% by 2025 are on track. This year, we have received seven approvals. There are 10 products pending approval with Anvisa, and we would be filing an additional 10-plus products before the end of this fiscal year. Iqueva projects a retail market growth of 11% in 2023 and 2024, and we should be growing at a rate higher than this. Moving on to Germany, our German revenues were 241 crores, up by 1% on a Y on Y basis. Constant currency revenue were at Euro 29 million, up by 4%. We have started growing again thanks to the start of business of some new tenders that were won earlier in the year, as well as four new launches in Q3. For the coming year, we anticipate single-digit growth 
coming from tender wins, some of which have been realized already. In 2022-23, we would have launched more than 10 new products in Germany. The new products help us compensate the pricing pressures due to increased competition in the market. On the U.S. side, U.S. revenues were at 291 crores, were up by 24%. Constant currency revenue was at 35 million, up by 13%. We have received OAI classification for our Indrat facility. For the Hage and the Oncology facility, we continue to wait for the U.S. FDA inspection. Future outlook of the U.S. business is linked to our ability to get new products on the market. We expect to file about five to six products in the current fiscal year. As of December 31, 22, 48 ANDAs were pending approval with the U.S. FDA. To conclude, while the BGS market shall continue to lead to growth, Germany shall continue to witness steady sequential recovery. For the Indraj facility, we are actively engaged with the regulator for resolution of issues at the earliest. Uh, operator, we can now open the call for Q&A, please. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may enter star in one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sayan Mukherjee from Nomura Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, so can you, uh, you know, uh, indicate the growth without Q ratio? What is the organic growth for India in this quarter? The base business growth is 12%, and the reported growth that we have is 17 So the remainder 5% is coming from Kiresha. Okay, thank you. And on the, uh, you know, Indraj facility, uh, if you, is there any communication, uh, you know, that you've received from the FDA? And what's your outlook there in terms of, uh, you know, timeline? And if you can indicate what's the level of contribution from that side to the overall revenues? So uh, what we have received is a letter stating the status of the facility as OAI. So uh, obviously the agency kind of will take some official action uh, in a time period of 45 to 90 days from the date of the letter, which was the day before yesterday. And um, the official action uh, ranges from uh, a regulatory meeting uh, or, or a warning letter or something of that, that, that sort. So we shall wait for them to decide before before communicating further. So, and Indra's revenue contribution is, we, we haven't disclosed the revenues by plant so far, right? Correct, correct. So, we, we, we uh, assign, assign uh, maybe uh, uh, I can come back to you on that. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Damianti Kerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first on India, uh, can you split the base uh, uh, India, India, growth into, India growth into volume, price, and new launches contribution? And uh, related question is what I understand, uh, price increase has been the significant driver for India sales this year. So from this high base of price increase, how should we see a uh, uh, growth scenario in uh, coming year? So the AICD growth is 12% for Torrent in Q3. Out of that, volume is 0 0.2, price is 8.1, and new products is 3.5. So this 8.1 is, again, 7% of the market price growth. So it's pretty much in line with the market growth, and we think this range will continue. This has been pretty much our mat range of price increase, and we think next few quarters also this should continue. Okay, so coming quarters also, uh, 7 to 8% price increase is uh, yeah. doable, right? That's right, that's right. Okay, and on the new launches, can you uh, comment on some of the uh, key launches which has supported this 3.5% contribution? Because I think in the past, we have mostly in 2 and 2 to half percent contribution from new products. So yeah, so the, the new launch contribution is calculated on a trailing 24-month basis. So in this period, we have launched... Uh, uh, a relatively high number of uh, brands in the chronic segment. Uh, uh, recently, the launch has been of Sita Glipton as uh, shared last quarter, where we continue to be the number one franchise of the newly launched brands. Uh, we should be doing roughly around uh, 4.8 to 5 crores a month based on AICD. Uh, 
so this is strengthening our uh, market share in diabetes. Similarly, in CNS, we had launches uh, this time last year in the Pregablin franchise, which continue to do quite well and remain uh, uh, the number one market share. Uh, so these are the key three, four launches that are adding the incremental new product growth. Okay, uh, that's helpful. And second is to ratio integration. So can you uh, talk about the progress like which you have done since uh, integrating the portfolio to your India business? So you mentioned you have a separate team and then you have added on people, etc. So uh, a few more color would be helpful. So the business uh, is on track. Uh, it's been two and a half months uh, in the quarter that we've uh, uh, got got the sales uh, from Q-Ratio. October 14th is when we had integrated, uh, so two and a half months of sales in Q3, uh, pretty much uh, continuing uh, the same division, same strength uh, in, in the business. Uh, we have started realizing synergies on the cost front uh, in distribution where there were uh, overlapping uh, costs, let's say distribution and CFA warehouse setup, which has all been merged, and some back-end uh, uh, functions which were overlapping. Uh, so this synergy has started playing out, uh, I think, about uh, 3 to 4 percent margin improvement is already seen in the first quarter. Uh, top line delivery continues as per uh, the, exist uh, the ongoing performance, and we think this should sustain. Uh, so I would say better to wait another quarter, at least uh, Q4, once we have the entire quarter uh, uh, under our uh, performance, uh, we can share further uh, insights into the performance of uh, Q-Ratio. Okay, that's helpful. My uh, second question is on Germany. So you mentioned now the supply has started for the new tender. Uh, so uh, this tender is for uh, like how uh, what period? And uh, do you anticipate any more tenders coming in say next uh, two or three quarters? So in Germany, how it works is the tender duration is two months, and usually you win some tenders and they start six months uh, later. So what what happens is that um, the 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 Q3 um, increase in sales we flagged a few months ago and saying that we we had tenders which would start in Q3. So subsequently each quarter we win a few tenders, and which is what led has led me to tell you that we expect um, single digit growth next year. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, all the best and get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sumit Gupta from Motila Loswal Securities. Please go ahead. Okay, hi, good evening. Uh, just want to know on the pricing update and the US market. So, what kind of. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, sorry to interrupt. Uh, if you're on a hands free mode, can you switch to a handset and speak? Your audio is not very clear. Hello? Yeah, better. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, just want to know on the price erosion update in the US market. So, what kind of trajectory that you are seeing? So, year on year, we are seeing high single digit. Okay, okay. And what is the capacity utilization overall? Oh, overall, it depends upon the plant. So, uh, Indra is a multi-country plant, right? Um, much more than the age. So, Indra's capacity utilization is in the high 70s. And uh, for the age, we are more, more in the uh, mid-55, 50, 56% range. Okay, understood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sham Srinivasan yeah, from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. Just uh, again focusing back on uh, the Q-Ratio acquisition, right? Uh, you talked about cost synergies, but uh, I remember in our, um, you know, uh, acquisition call, we talked about uh, revenue as well. At some point of time, we look at the top five brands, Teddy Bar, Atoglas, Poo, all of that, and just see where, where they are priced with respect to uh, market and if necessary take price increases so is that something that we it's early to comment about that or you think we have selectively started doing that as well so that's also started uh, already one round of price increase which was already taken before the acquisition that was to offset the increased raw material cost uh, that has been affected and that new stock will be on the market in this quarter so that should also start reflecting and uh, otherwise, I mean, revenue, the, the uh, Q-Ratio revenue growth was uh, about 20% for the quarter of the Q-Ratio uh, standalone. So the growth is pretty much on track. Uh, sir, but I thought, uh, you know, we were expecting to go faster relative to the segment, right? Or maybe it's too early days for the two and a half months, you think, uh, for this 20% growth, I was under the impression that, you know, the segment is growing even maybe 20 and Q-Ratio is probably growing faster. 
No, I think uh, the segment that we specifically are covering, which is the prescription-based periodoma, this is significantly faster than that. Uh, but either case, uh, next quarter should give a better picture. I think this uh, mid uh, to high teens growth is something that we feel is sustainable uh, for this portfolio. And rest will be the levers that we mentioned earlier, which should start playing out probably by end of uh, the next financial year. Got it. Very helpful. Just on the figure on the financial side, so what is the kind of debt position now after the deal? Uh, and if you could just reiterate uh, some of the cash flow numbers that we are generating and how we plan to kind of reduce debt over time. Yeah. So, uh, Sham, I think by 31st March 2023, uh, the net debt position should be around uh, 4,300. And uh, as per the repayment schedule, next year we should be repaying roughly 1,200. And uh, probably in FI25, a major chunk of the cash flow will get allocated uh, towards uh, prepayments of uh, all these loans. Got it. So, and yeah. largely, so there is no, uh, so largely from internal accruals, right? So essentially we are going to divert, what about CAPEX? Sorry, I think that's the other question I had. So, okay, 100 crores you're going to repay, and uh, what is the rest of the uh, operating cash flows going towards? Right. So, so roughly you can say the uh, EBITDA should be close to around 3,000, let's say, mm -hmm. of which uh, the conversion to operating cash flow should be 80%, uh, which is 2,400. Mm. And uh, CapEx uh, over the next three years, on an average, should not be more than 250, max 300, I would say, per annum. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Just trying to understand gross margin better. So, uh, 3Q uh, gross margins are a little down versus 2Q, uh, while our higher gross margin business, India and Brazil, have done fairly well. Can you explain that? Yeah, so, <clears throat> Prakash, I don't know if you've heard the opening speech where I had explained. Oh, you were on the other Sorry? You were on the other call, sorry about that. So, so what, I, what I had said is uh, there's a one-time uh, impact uh, of gross margin by 0.6% uh, for the quarter, and which is primarily because of underabsorption of the manufacturing overheads uh, in the month of October wherein immediately after the uh, US FDA audit, which ended uh, uh, on 28th of September, uh, there had to be some uh, cleaning validation of certain equipments uh, which had to be done as a follow-up to the US FDA audit. Uh, because of that, uh, there has been an underabsorption of overhead, uh, which has impacted the gross budget by 0.6%. Any other reason? I mean, because Brazil also done fairly well, which is a higher gross margin business. No, no other reason, uh, Prakash. This is only one-time impact uh, which we have seen. And, and what do you attribute this uh, Indraj facility? You know, the 483s have come again, and now the OAI, it had warning letter status earlier. So, uh, and, and we've seen other facilities where other companies also seeing, you know, observations coming back. So, I mean, uh, it's been three, four years now. So what's really, you know, uh, that uh, as a company or as an industry, we are missing it. Oh, you're right, I mean, So as far as uh, this uh, recent OAI is concerned, uh, uh, we are still working on it, right? I mean, trying to get in touch uh, with the US FDA to understand better. So it would take a couple of weeks, I would say. Uh, for us to get a better hang of uh, what would be the next uh, thing uh, which we should be looking at. Uh, so maybe uh, 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 post one to two weeks, uh, we'll have a better clarity to give you some uh, feedback on that. Okay, and and uh, one more for you on the interest cost side. So you mentioned uh, three thousand crore EBITDA with the eighty percent uh, conversion. So uh, you know the debt repayment should be much higher than the twelve hundred crore you talked about, or how do you think it? Uh, you know. That's a conservative number or it's a realistic number? No, so it's a scheduled repayment which is there for the next year. Uh, mm -hmm. And I agree. I mean, I, I mean, if there's additional cash which is there on the balance sheet, it will be used for uh, prepayment of the loans to the extent whatever is possible. 
but i was saying worst even if i take a scheduled repayment which is happening next year of 1200 crores uh, that should end uh, most of my previous acquisition uh, funding and therefore fy25 whatever cash flows are getting generated considering the growth over the next 2 years most of that can be allocated for prepayment of uh, curacio loan okay lovely and lastly for the uh, uh, you know if you can also uh, give some color on the market formation of sacubitral valsartan uh, understand not many players have come in or it's too crowded as was seen in other uh, diabetes products like you know wilda cita etc or is still it's, it's still market is getting formed market is still getting formed i think the matter is still uh, subjudice so would uh, uh, want to wait till this there's further clarity Okay, and and you expect that in next three uh, six months, Aman? It should be hopefully within the next six months. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, on the uh, on the uh, other in the other in the other of the market, there's been a pretty strong growth in this quarter. Uh, the two ninety crore number, what's the two forty to fifty crore we've been doing? any particular uh, driver for this growth in the quarter uh i don't think nitin uh, it's been a it's been quite a good quarter i would say there are one or two geographies where there were some uh, incremental opportunities uh, which were seen uh, which we which we were able to uh, take it uh, that's the reason for row the growth is little higher but otherwise uh, 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 even a country like mexico is doing fine i would say uh, growing double digit for almost last 4 to 5 quarters uh, high high double digit so yes i mean to a certain extent there was some incremental opportunity which had come in quarter 3 uh, in uh, uh, i would say russia basically uh, which has helped uh, in getting uh, such a strong growth but but this shouldn't be we should not take this as a base to model going forward numbers on this side yeah, but russia is a very small market for us within so okay so although there's yes i mean possibly one or two percent contribution to the overall incremental growth but not major i would say so this 290 can can we take it as the point i was asking is should can we take this 290 as a base for this business or from a modeling perspective because nitin nitin it's a little difficult for me to give any guidance on that maybe okay. two two quarters or three quarters if that number is sustaining then possibly i can confirm that but i think it's better to wait for one more quarter to see whether this number is sustaining okay. but uh, nothing mm-hmm. as of now which can indicate that uh, uh, this can go up or down huh? so okay Second, to be on the curatio costs uh, on S J N A and in staff costs. Uh, I mean, has a I mean, we've built in only one one and a half months of these costs, right? Or so some more costs uh, we should pencil in for the next quarter. No, it's almost two and a half months uh, which has been factored. Also, not not major. Even if you take a full quarter, I would say. Okay, so that so at least on the overhead front, we largely now everything all the costs are basically the base. I, I would think so. And uh, lastly, on on Brazil, uh, uh, so you mentioned that you know market growth is now uh, guided to be about ten percent for the next couple of years. Is, is was it correct? Yeah. So IMS projects generally next five years eight to twelve percent growth. Next two years is projected at eleven percent. Okay. And given the fact that we are in the process of launching multiple new products, we should be in a position to constantly outpace uh, the market. Correct. So we have three growth drivers. Uh, essentially, uh, last one year we've increased the number of CNS reps. So that has given a good momentum to our CNS franchise. We are Genrix business is doing very well, and then thirdly, the new launches. And what proportion of the business will be generic right now in the, in the US? In the present? Fourteen. So fourteen percent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to our participants: If you wish to ask a question, you may enter star and one. We'll take our next question from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question, Sanjay. On the Brazil business, we saw you know a good uh, step up in this quarter. Uh, I, I, you know, I heard the com- commentary that you mentioned, uh, but it's fair to assume that there is you know this number is sustainable, and as we launch more products, uh, we should continue to see growth from this day. 
So, Neha, the previous two quarters, local currency growth had been 8%. Um, and essentially, that growth was on the lower side, but IMS was showing this uh, mid-teens uh, growth, which is the underlying growth of the business. Uh, Q1 is, in Brazil generally gets impacted because of Q4. You know, there's overstocking from the, uh, from the wholesalers. So, Q4 of last year was showing a growth of 21%. So, uh, Q1 is a little bit impacted number. Q2, we had some shelf stock adjustments because of which primary sales were on the lower side. But the uh, IMS sales continued in mid-teens. So I would say that um, double-digit, uh, you know, north of 10% uh, to, uh, uh, is, a, is a given given the market growth. And we should be uh, reasonably higher. So I, I, I would tell you that it looks, uh, it looks like this is the trend. Understood. And uh, did I hear correctly that you are planning to file 10 more products by the end of FY23? We would file a total of 10 plus products in this fiscal year. Oh, okay. So the ten, the ten pending, uh, which includes part of the filings, right? So no, the ten pending the 10 are as of today. Okay, okay, understood. So by the end, we'll have probably twenty products pending, uh, pending for approval. Yeah, I, I would say at least uh, sixteen to seventeen products, maybe twenty. Yeah. Okay, and by when should we start seeing commercialization? I mean, what's the approval timeline now? Like in Brazil, uh, has it improved? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's usually now 24 months, and uh, what you would see is five, five, at least. See, it's uh, quite heavy to launch branded generics. So uh, I, I think uh, what you would see generally is four to six products a year. Okay, understood. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to our participants: if you wish to ask a question, you may enter star and one. We'll take the next question from the line of Krishnendu Saha from Quantum Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for my question. Just uh, understanding the 24% growth in the U.S. is uh, mostly from the third-party filings, is it? No, no, no. This growth is because of a uh, base impact. So if you go back to the same period last year, the sales were on the lower side, 31 million. So, and while generally for the last, uh, I would say six, seven quarters, of our sales have been 35 million. So that particular dip in the same period last year is what results in the percentage growth this year. I see. And so, uh, said, how many products do we have in the market actually? So, in, uh, where? Uh, so we sell about 55 products. Uh, Mr. Saha, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, your audio is not very clear. Could you repeat your question? Can you hear me now? Yeah, Can you hear me now? Please. Yeah. yeah, how many products do you have in Brazil itself? So, Brazil, we in have about 22 products. Sir, did you get my answer? It's about 22. Uh, Mr. Saha, are you still there? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. So I answered your yeah. question, and we have about 22 yeah. products. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Thank you. Uh, Thank just you. on the acquisition front, uh, how much of uh, our revenue will be on the OTC front in India right now? So right now uh, would be a small percentage uh, because uh, with acquisition also. With with the acquisition, that's right. Yeah. Any percentage you could give us? Uh, we'll be able to share better next quarter because there's only two and a half months. Uh, but the idea is to focus on the RX piece first and then ramp up the OTC for the acquisition as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any participant who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one. We would also request participants to please use handset mode to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Cinderella Carvalho from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Just wanted to know your thoughts on U.S. market uh, because of Indrad now. How do you see, uh, what is your thought process and in terms of getting the new launches to the market? What is the plan going ahead? Uh, any changes that you intend to make? Uh, any third-party sourcing? Any other thoughts that you can help us understand? Sure. So, uh, you know, um, so this way I uh, kind of is a is a setback for the for the organization. Uh, we would have greater visibility 45 to 90 days down the line, right? As the the range of options before the FDA is quite wide. Uh, there can be um, so depending upon the decision they make. 
uh, we are uh, kind of building up various scenarios as to what is the best way forward. Uh, I would say that it, it looks challenging uh, to bring new products to the U.S. market um, in the near term, uh, especially because of what happened in that, but also that we have not yet had the inspectors come over to the hedge. So we are waiting for that inspection to happen. Um, as of today, I'm sitting on 55 filings for the U.S., out of which, uh, you know, I think 19 are from Indra and 16 are from the hedge. So there's a lot of filings from these two facilities. And um, if, um, as with the passage of time, the value of these filings gets depreciated. So, so we'll have to kind of uh, decide how we want to proceed. But I won't be able to share that with you today. But it's uh, sufficient to say that we are in the scenario building phase, depending uh, on how the FDA outcome goes. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I think, Sanjala, the only thing I wanted to add with, to what Sanjay said, uh, so the we have enough capacities. Huh? It's quite underutilized. And uh, if things go positive, as far as the HV inspection is concerned, uh, many of the products which are there in India can really ship to the hedge without any issue because uh, uh, the filings for getting approval for all these products have already been done or it's just uh, waiting for submission and which would take a very short time to get an approval. And uh, additionally, we are also looking at uh, some of the CMO options uh, for certain high volume products uh, which, which uh, we uh, initiated uh, to optimize uh, the overall cost and be more competitive. Uh, so there are options uh, which we are looking at, uh, at least for the existing uh, product base. But as Sanjay said, you know, the new product filing which have been done from Indrad, that's something which uh, we need to uh, understand uh, whether something can be salvaged uh, out of that plant. This is very helpful. Thank you so much for that. And one more question is on the Indian Derma space. You mentioned that the RX market you will be focusing first. So what is, uh, if any, uh, thoughts that you can share in terms of strategy that you're going in uh, uh, for the Derma specifically for the Kirosho acquisition? If you could highlight uh, our strengths, what are we trying to build up? will be helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we had um, mentioned uh, in the last call that uh, Kiryashu has a strong presence in pediatric derma, uh, and uh, they also have a very strong presence in uh, the south and west markets. Uh, there is a lot more opportunity in the north and east markets, uh, but those markets are just uh, smaller in size compared to the south and west. But there is still uh, uh, quite a big uh, headroom for increasing uh, the, the share in these regions as well. Uh, so overall, while the existing markets will continue to grow, uh, we can add uh, uh, a reasonable share from from these non-covered markets, which we'll be taking up probably in the next couple of quarters. Uh, all the brands, uh, the top five brands, are continuing to do quite well uh, as of now, and we believe that uh, uh, the top three brands, uh, whether it's Teddy Bar or Togla, uh, they continue to see uh, more and more uh, market share gain even in the RX space. So hopefully that should uh, continue in the same range of growth for the next couple of quarters, and the additional uh, initiatives should add to the incremental growth. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Tushar Manudhane from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. So just on this uh, inspection at uh, <clears throat> and in that, so what triggered this inspection, and uh, basically will that also help in getting the other sites inspected? So uh, one site is not linked to the other, and this inspection is actually a follow-up on the inspection which happened in March of 2019. So it, it is a second inspection post the observations which were made in 2019. Okay, so so basically we still kind of wait for the other sites to get inspected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, independent of this site. And uh, and uh, clearly the issue which maybe USFD highlighted at this site is kind of taken care of at the other side so that if at all the inspection happens, this doesn't recur. Absolutely. And even the observations this time at Dindra are not the same as the ones from last time, right? They are not repeat observations. Okay. Okay. And how much of the gross block, uh, so, so to say, is associated for the U.S. Uh, business? I understand that it's a multi-purpose or multi geographical site, but broadly, how much of the gross block can be called out for U.S. business? Uh, at Indrad plant? Combining uh, Indrad, Dej, both? Oh, I think uh, around 45 to 50 percent. 
डेडिकेटेड फॉर यूएस Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Kumar Somya from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm so good. Sir, I have just one book keeping question. What was the forex loss during the quarter? Uh, so forex loss during the quarter was roughly forty crores. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, sir. Actually, just one more outstanding question on uh, depreciation and interest costs. Also, are largely factored in the transaction for me. Uh, so, amortization costs for two and a half months, yes. Interest costs for two and a half months, yes. Okay. And uh, you know, in terms of cost optimization measures, are there anything that we can look forward to from a co- various costs and perspective next year? Oh, no, absolutely right. I mean, what we said is. Uh, <clears throat> so we've applied for this uh, merger scheme right between kirashio and tpn and once the merger is happening maybe two or three or four months down the line then uh, the synergy uh, value will start uh, coming in uh, and additionally procurement synergies also uh, are likely in the next uh, financial year so procurement synergy plus as the pcpm increases from this base uh, should be further uh, levers for margin expansion for the next at least uh, uh 2 to 3 years i mean is this is from a curiosity perspective i was also interested in x of curiosity or the other levers in the business to improve uh, you know the core business the x of curiosity or profitability are there any levers that you working on so nitin uh, if i tell you anything uh, wouldn't be uh, a scientific calculated number but uh, what i can tell you is that it's a continuous process in trying to find out whatever cost efficiency is possible so that happens uh, in a very continuous way i would say but the only thing i i i recollect now is that uh, the freight expenses uh, which had gone up substantially since uh, quarter 3 of last year uh, that's still to normalize i would say by 0.5 percent so that's one lever definitely going forward because uh the the increase in freight expenses which had happened in quarter 3 of last year at least uh, la, what we see is last one or two quarter it started falling actually but there's still some amount of recovery which is pending which should happen probably over the next uh, two to three quarters so that's that's something which could be certain but otherwise on an overall basis we keep on working on whatever cost efficiency is possible thank you so much Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sion Mukherjee from Namora Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so, being on uh, just to follow up, following up on the uh, you know the cost pressures. Uh, so, on the raw material side, any trend you are seeing? Uh, you know, with China reopening, any 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 color or any trend you want want to highlight? No, uh, Sion. Um, uh, i mean the input cost increases uh, it was not a significant impact as far as we were concerned um, so nothing much to talk about uh, from that perspective if i recollect you know when the cost had started moving up we said that the impact could be roughly 0.5 0.7% uh, mm-hmm. but not nothing significant i would say okay and just one more uh, question you uh, you know mentioned about um, one off cost this quarter 0.6% that's around 150 crore so i'm just wanting to understand what how would you ascribe this do you mean uh, the lower revenues because of the shutdown to that extent no no so 0.6 is roughly uh, sign i think 12 to 15 crores uh, not one okay 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 uh, so and, i'm sorry yeah yeah 12 to 15 crores yeah so sign i mean just to put it in a very simple way whatever direct cost you incur right for manufacturing has to be balanced with a revenue right so there has to be a cost revenue matching and how does that happen i so you have to inventorize all this cost on your manufacturing right so there is a balancing in by way of inventory or when it is sold it is balanced by way of sales right mm. so what happens is uh, you determine on an annual basis uh, the per unit cost for each product 
So what typically happens is when you manufacture, let's say, only 50% instead of 100%, the cost absorption is only 50% on the inventory, right? So the rest 50% is not getting absorbed. So that's a one-time cost which comes and sits in your P&L. Right. So that's what has happened in October, basically, after the USFD audit was completed on 28th of September. Uh, there was a... Uh, shutdown which was taken for almost 15 to 20 days in the month of October uh, for doing all those uh, cleaning validation of equipments and stuff. Okay. Understood. And just one last question if I can on the US. Uh, I mean, you know, we have a delayed resolution and no, I mean, in, in both in Indra and the H. Uh, how should we think about uh, US revenues given the price erosion and new launch from other facilities? If you can, you know, give some color around the expectations in the U.S. market? So I think it's too early, uh, Sayan. Uh, so, uh, so I think one is uh, the price erosion year on year with Sanjay spoke, right? I mean, high single digit. That's something we believe uh, should be the worst case as far as base business is concerned, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, from a new product perspective, at least from the age and Indrad, those things cannot come in until... At least for the age, if the reinspection is happening and getting clear, then possibly yes. But till that point in time, there's no visibility of the new product coming in. There are few external uh, uh, products uh, which will come, uh, maybe a couple of them uh, over the next two years, but not significant uh, revenue contributor is what I can say. So at the most, uh, I would say U.S. would be flattish to declining sales over the next one year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Prashant Kothari from Pick Depth. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my first question was on the India uh, kind of market capacity. One of the thesis is that uh, during COVID times, the diagnosis of patients is reduced, and that should have picked up in the last one year, enabling more more patients. Uh, for us, uh, is there anything that happening? Uh, do you think that can become a, you know, a stronger value of the for us in the coming years? Yeah, uh, I mean, compared to last uh, couple of quarters, we are seeing an increase in the chronic growth trend. Uh, so I think uh, on a the mat basis, the, the chronic market grew at about 8-9%, which in the quarter is 11%. So sequentially, you can see that it's increasing. Uh, so we do believe that uh, uh, it may stabilize at this 11-12% level, uh, but it does provide a, a significant uh, volume opportunity for a player like us who's already uh, got this much contribution from the chronic business. Okay, okay, thanks. And uh, on these uh, US OEI thing, you, you mentioned that uh, you can shift products from Indra to uh, the race. Was that comment in regard to the existing product uh, market or was it for the new uh, product launches? Uh, for the existing, for sure, subject to Dahej getting cleared, is what I said. Uh, Sanjay, for the new products which have been filed from Indra, the parallel filing can happen for the same product from uh, the age. So, uh, for the filings which have been made, uh, let's say, a few years ago, uh, I, I don't think we will make the investment to shift them. But for forthcoming filings, yes. Okay. But for, for kind of existing large products coming out of Indra, you can shift them all to the age in case yeah. the age gets cleared. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Prakash, uh, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, apologies. Uh, so, a couple of clarifications. So, one you mentioned on Germany, you already started to see Q&Q. Uh, with the, you know the corrective action and the new tenders etc that you want but how do we see the fiscal 24 i mean do we see a, a meeting kind of growth given the low base and then normalize to high single digit uh, the how do we see this business for next two years 
So, uh, Prakash, what I have is uh, visibility on the basis of the tenders which we have won, and uh, you know we have a strategy in place to win more tenders every every quarter, right? Uh, so, what I indicated is as of today for next year, mid mid single digit is uh, uh, is something that I have visibility to. If I win additional tenders, it could be high single digit to close to double digit, but that is uh, right now not in the bag. Okay. Okay. What's in the bag is mid single digit. Correct. Despite the low base. The base is twenty nine million euros a quarter. Okay. Which is okay. I think uh, uh, almost close because I think at some point we've crossed thirty one, but not more. Okay, fair enough. And secondly, I think uh, Sudhir mentioned the giving example of three thousand crore EBITDA. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, if I see consensus, my numbers, etc., is uh, you know, ten, twelve percent higher. So it's a rough number you're guiding, or it is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and approximately three thousand, I say. Uh, if that is the so number, then this is the way to look at. Is what I was trying to. Okay, but but if I look very broadly next year, so India, Brazil, and the other uh, ROW market, the 70% of your branded generic, uh, you know, business is good to grow uh, 10, 12, 13%. Uh, is that fair assumption to build models? I would think so. And on on the margin side, uh, you see levers for uh, you know margin expansion given. Profitability of Croatia will increase plus costs are coming down. Uh, would that be fair? I, I would think so, uh, 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 Prakash. I mean, what we have been saying is uh, because of this branded generic pieces, there are one or two levers which keep on coming every year, provided other things remain constant, right? So one is the price increase driven gross margin improvements, and the other is the operating leverage, which should continue, I believe. Okay. Plus, the, lastly, plus the Q ratio upside uh, on the margins, yeah. Yeah, perfect. And lastly, for Aman, so for next year, if we see India, uh, you know, what are the, I mean, last year you mentioned about, you know, the CNS launch, uh, one in diabetes, one in cardio. So how is the pipe looking in terms of decent size uh, brands uh, which you plan to launch, which gives us confidence of 12, 13% growth? The upcoming financial year uh, won't have as many launches as the previous year uh, in terms of number. Uh, there are a few significant opportunities in diabetes which will still be there, but uh, numbers will definitely be lower. Uh, instead, the focus will be on increasing the the traction and size of the recently launched brand. So there is still enough uh, headroom for us to continue the new launch momentum in the next year from the existing launches. You mean the line extensions, etc., from the? No, no. Even the recently off patent uh, launches that have been done. Uh, so the okay. new launches take time to to gain uh, reasonable scale. Uh, so, like for example, we've uh, uh, done five crores now of Sita Glyptin in about six months. Five crores monthly. Uh, we would hope that maybe by the end of next year we cross 100 crores overall, uh, and that should uh, continue growing. Uh, uh, at a high grade. So that contribution should continue to increase from the new launches. The new year, the for next financial year, will not have as many number of launches. So uh, that new contribution will probably be lower than the previous year. Okay, so I'm just trying to dissect it here. So 12%, so we would again see about, say, 8% price and about 3 uh, 3 3% kind of new product and maybe 1-2% volume. Yes, that should be uh, uh, doable in the next year. Okay, 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 great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Krishnendu Saha from Quantum Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, just to follow up on the last question I asked. Uh, if I do remember correctly, a couple of years back, we had a 36 odd or 40 odd products in uh, what do you call uh, in in Brazil. So right now we're at 22. I'm just wondering that. And uh, this is the fact that we'll be having some supply or procurement benefits for acquisition. Um, but I believe that we also had a three-year manufacturing contract with them, if I'm right. So could you just elaborate on these two, please? 
Oh, on the first part, uh, so Brazil, uh, uh, we have more approvals, but we focus on 22 products which are in our lead build brand category. So uh, essentially, the idea is to follow the model which has worked well for us in India, which is to build large brands and um, and uh, you know invest behind um, uh, those that have the potential to grow. And we have taken a, a, a series of brands into a kind of a automatic mode where we don't promote them, and uh, we kind of let them um, let them just continue on the base that they. Have. Have because it's not worth putting money and resources behind them. So I would say 22 brands are actively uh, uh, promoted mm-hmm. and invested behind uh, in Brazil. Because uh, the focus products, then. Yeah, yeah, lead build products as we call them inside the company. And, uh, uh, the rest are more in the maintain or uh, you know uh, I would say uh, category. Uh, and then your second question was what? Uh, we had a sourcing agreement for acquisition. In India, so we uh, spoke about the fact that we'll be having some sourcing benefits next year. Uh, how do we uh, see that being true? We have a sourcing agreement for three years with a acquired acquire company. That, that would not be for all products. So for the full portfolio, there is still enough uh, headroom for finding alternate suppliers and getting better pricing. And uh, just the last question: the EBITDA margin is far better than our overall company. That's what I realized last time on the call. Is it uh, not far better, better than the overall current farm? Yeah, so what we said is it's not dilutive to the overall uh, margins of Torrent Pharma, which would mean that Kiratio has similar uh, margins. That was the thing that was spoken last time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the kind of Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Kunal Randiria from Novama. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening. Just one question. Uh, any visibility can you uh, you can give us on rev limit launch timelines? Oh, so we are not in the initial phases. So for us, it's a, it's a little bit of a distant launch. So yeah, it's it's not in the next uh, 12 months. Uh, got it. And uh, should I assume that it's nothing to do with uh, plant issues? No, no, it's not made at Torrent. It's made at a third, third party. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now request Mr. Sanjay Gupta to add a few closing comments. Over to you, sir. So um, I would just like to thank you for your interest in Torrent and for joining today's call. Uh, for any additional questions, uh, please feel, feel free to call our investor relations group. Uh, thank you very much and look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of Torrent Pharmaceuticals, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.